Hello everyone. Welcome to Tutorials Diary. This is lesson 6 of Ethereum development course for beginner. If you haven't gone through my last 5 videos, I would recommend you to go to that video first of all then comes to this lesson number 6. Because in that sessions we have covered how you can set up your development environment for Ethereum, how you can build the smart contract in a Remix IDE, then how you can compile that smart contract and then how you can deploy on different blockchain which is your Ganesha blockchain, which is your testnet blockchain and your JavaScript virtual machine. So in this lesson 6 which is also our last session for this course, we'll show you that how you can access the same functionality, smart contract functionality through frontend. So here in this session we'll show you the use of Web3 JS to connect your frontend with your blockchain. So let's start with this session and let's see the step what we have to follow. So first of all what we'll do, we will create a project folder. So first of all the step one we are going to do in this lesson is that we will create a Visual Studio project that will contain the smart contract files, the frontend application and will write Web3 piece of code to connect to your blockchain from the frontend application. So let's do one thing. Uh, I will open the command prompt first of all in admin mode. Then I will create, I will go to my E drive. Now I will create a folder here. I will create a project folder with the name. I will say make directory student sample. I'm just giving some sample name here. So this will create directory for me. Now what I will do, I will run this command npm in it. What it will do, it will create the required JSON file, the project file for me under this folder. Once you click on enter, it will ask few questions which you can simply click on enter. I will simply click enter here and say yes. So let me show you what it has done. If you go to the student sample folder, this has created package.json file. If you open this file, let me show you. You will see this description. Okay, this is your project name, then, then the version, description and so kind of information. So this is how you can create a project under one folder. Now, next step is that, so we will use, as I mentioned before, we will use Web3.js to connect your frontend with the blockchain. So for that plan, you have to install that Web3.js under this folder. So what we'll do, we'll run this command, Ethereum web3.js save. So this command will install web3.js under this folder. So again this will take us some time but this is again taking all the file from npm which is not package manager. You need not to do some anything from your side go to some URL no. This will download the file automatically from this folder and create all the required folder and copy all the files which you created for this one. So if you see here, so since this is going to take some time, I will explain your con concept here how this will work. So what we'll do in this sample, we will develop a simple HTML page where user can come and fill the information, student name and student age. Once he or she enter the submit button, the request should go to blockchain and we should be able to create a user there. We should be able to call the set student detail function from our side. So this is what we'll show you in this session. So for this one, this Web3.js has to be installed. So as I mentioned, it will take some time. So we'll wait for this to be installed. Okay, so since this is taking some time, I will just show you the other project which I have already built, which we'll use for this lesson. So once you run that command, that install web3.js command, it will create all the files for you. So now the next step is that we will open this project from Visual Studio. So once we have, once you run this two command, the first is npm init 
and then you just run and install web3.js in the same folder so then all this file will come for you so the, now the next step which I will do from your side is just go over this one let me remove or uh, not this one let me go here just go to file and say open folder so once you choose this one just select this folder test folder and then it will open the folder for you it will re re open all the required file for you so now what what step you have to follow whatever smart contract which we were having in the in the remix take a copy of the smart contract save in the student.sol file to your system and copy under the same folder so which we have done if you just see this one this is the same smart contract which we have developed in the remix so since we have added solidity extension to this visual studio so this will support this one so this is the step number one which you do once you open the project in the visual studio and step number two you have to develop a html page a front end application so i have developed a very simple html page for this one and which i will show you in some time how it look like and let me first of all show you that thing only if i just open this in the chrome so this is how it will look like so this will have student name and age two values so we will go and fill this information when we say submit this should make a call to a smart contract which is currently running on a blockchain and it should set the values so this is what we do in this sample so for that one we have developed a very basic html page you can see this one so this is the table format which we have developed which has these two uh, two input values and now the important point to understand here about web3 so now we have as i mentioned before what we are doing here we are using web3.js to connect to your blockchain from the front end so this piece of code i will also share in the video description so they can take this one and you can use from your side i will also share this sample file with you so if you see here what we are doing here so we are creating a web3 instance okay so here we are connecting to our ganesha blockchain so if you see http provider is localhost 7545 that means we are connecting with the ganesha blockchain so this is the default syntax which you have to use and then you have to use a default account so currently we have 10 account in the ganesha blockchain so i'm using the fourth account here so now the other thing is that let me show you first of all what we have to do here so here which i have removed just now in this contract you have to mention the abi so from where you will get this value this abi value okay so till now it's very simple you are creating a web3 instance which is getting connected to your gracious blockchain then you're using a default account for web3 from your uh, 10 accounts which you already have then you are going to create a interface you're going to define your smart contract here okay for that one you need to have a abi so from where you will get this value you will get this value from remix you have to go to remix you have to go to compile option so there you will see this detail button just click on this detail button if you go down here you will get this value abi just take a copy from here go to your visual studio again and paste that whole abi here this is again very simple so once you paste the abi here then what you're doing that smart contract the student contract which we have deployed it is currently on which address if you remember i have discussed in the last sessions that whenever you deploy the smart contract on a blockchain it reside on some address so that is the same address we have to mention it here so to take this address what we'll do we'll go to again remix and we'll go to run option we have deployed on the ganesha blockchain so you can take this address from here copy this address and simply go to this one and paste it here 
So now what we have done, we have developed a Java, we are creating a JavaScript function here, which is set student detail, which is in term calling the student is a contract now. Okay, the subcontract student contract is currently on this address. So we are calling this function, which is nothing our smart contract function. And this required two inputs, which is student name and student age. Along with that, we are also associating some gas to this one because whenever you call this function, you need to spend some ether. So this is the reason we have used this syntax here to associate some gas here for this function. So now, this is again very simple syntax. It maybe looks complex in the starting one. When you start using this one, it looks very simple. So now the next step is that, so we have done all the stuff which is required. Next step is that to test this HTML page. So what we can do, we can just go here and refresh this one. So one more thing which you have to understand here, you can also do a logging. If you have some issue, if you face some issue, you have to understand that where it is failing. You have a function here which is console.log and you can log the values. If I say test. So where you will see this console.log? This is the question which comes to our mind. Okay. Yes, we have put this logging, but where we can see this function uh, logging here. So this logging can be seen in a Chrome. Whenever you run this one, this smart, uh, this page, you can click on shift control J. That will open the console for you. You can see here, whenever I will refresh this web page, this will show a test to me, right? So if you see, if I do a refresh again, a test will be shown to me because this is a, I have printed in a log file. Now let's go and test again. I will put my name here, cars and age is 32. I will say submit. So you can see here, no error came. That means it's all successful. Now let's go to blockchain and test it there. Check there. You can see a contract call is made. That means we have successfully called the smart contract from our front-end application. Now, if you want to test it further, you can go in and get the detail from here. Remix. It will give you this detail. Vikas 32. So that means that call is successful. Now you can go and extend this HTML as per your requirement. You can use the get function as well. You can, by clicking on some button, you can also have some button here and then you can call that get function as well from here. But from this session, you may get some idea like how you can access your smart contract, which is running on a blockchain from front end application. So this is again standard step you have to follow. There is nothing rocket science here. Simple, straightforward step. And but you have to keep the only one thing in mind that this ABI address has to be correct. So suppose if I mention wrong address here, if I take this wrong address, suppose. No, now if I try to run this one, let's let me show you here. Now I have mentioned wrong address. If I re refresh this one, now let me try to submit with some test 34 submit it will show me a message here invalid address because the address which I have given is invalid so these are two important points here one is ABI and second is address you have to be very careful that this information is correct only and this console dot log is very helpful to track where you have some issue or not and you can put this function as and when you require this console.log. This will help you a lot. So this is all we have in this session. I am hopeful that you have learned the basic of Ethereum from this whole course. We have tried to make it very simple for beginners only. So hopefully in the next course we will show you in the more details going forward and we'll ensure that that videos are more simple. Thank you. Thanks for watching.